Year 10, so we are looking at rearranging equations this week, and this is your recorded lesson which summarises everything that we've, we've done so far. So make sure you have a book or piece of paper ready to write up any new methods, steps and examples you want to neatly have ready to refer back to as we get on to more complicated problems. Um, you're watching the recorded lessons, that's great. The follow-up clips that you want to go and do following this lesson are clips 281, 282, 283 and 280 from Hegarty Maths and remember we're aiming for that 85% in your homework. So let's get started. Um, if we start with a question like this, it says make W the subject of the formula. So firstly you need to make sure that it's really clear when you're working out that you know what you're trying to find. And remember when we say solving equations, sorry, when we say rearranging equations, we're doing the same method as if we were doing solving equations. So for this question here, we are trying to get W on its own. That's your only job. You want to get W on its own on whatever side it's currently on. So just like we were solving, you're going to pretend you're like solving for W, you're trying to get W on its own. You draw a line here um, and your second step is to say, OK, I'm always going to move anything. So I'm going to do any adding and subtracting first. And then following that, you're going to unstick. So this is moving. And then you're going to do any multiplication and division. So I like to call that unsticking afterwards. So what I mean by that is if we look at that W, what's going on with that W? Well, currently, with this W here, it's being multiplied by the 3. And A here, A is being subtracted from it. So the two things that we need to get rid of, the two things we need to kill are this three and this minus a. And using our steps here, we're going to say, right, well, I need to move anything first. So anything that's being added or subtracted to the letter I want, that's what I'm going to get rid of first. So here, this minus a is what I'm going to move first. I'm going to get rid of this minus a. And to get rid of a minus a, to kill a minus a, I'm going to add a to both sides, just like you would when you're solving. So I do add a there. I do it on both sides. That kills that. Everything else stays. So this side becomes y plus a equals, and the only thing on this side is 3w. And you've done your moving. OK, the next thing you need to do, let me make myself a little bit smaller, just so you've got enough space. The next thing you want to do is you want to get rid of this three. So remember, we're trying to get on its own again. You're trying to get this W on its own. So this guy here on its own. What's stopping that W from being on its own? The three. Now, what's the three doing to the W? The three and the W are being multiplied. So now I'm at this unsticking stage. To unstick, I divide both sides by three. So to kill a times by three, I divide by three and I write divide by three on both sides here. So what I get left with here, well, that kills that. So there's just a W on its own on this side. And on this side, it's everything on that side divided by three. So everything on that side has to get divided by three. And you've got some options about how you write this. But the easiest way is to write everything on this side divided by three. So your final answer here is W equals Y plus A, all divided by three. OK, your second option, if you wanted to, is to write this as W equals. And you could, when you're here and you're dividing this by three, you could divide the Y by three and the A by three individually. So the other way of writing this is Y divided by three plus A divided by three. But the absolute key is everything on this side has got divided by three. So if you write it like this, everything's being divided by three. If you write it like this, everything individually is being divided by three. OK, let's have a look at another example. So here it says make M the subject of the formula. So M is this guy here. You're doing a rearranging equations. So we draw a line here. And remember, we're saying to ourselves, uh, get M on its own. So you're basically solving it as if you want to find what M is. So your first step here is to move. 
So anything that's being added or subtracted to M, you get rid of first. And then the second thing here is you unstick. So again, anything being multiplied or divided at this stage, okay? And your method for both of these is the same method as if you were doing solving and using your kill-kill method. So you do the same to both sides, you kill-kill both sides, and then um, you rewrite it. So when I look at that M here, there are two things that are affecting this M. There are two things that are on this side that we don't want there. There's the H and there's the 4. So I need to get rid of the H and I need to get rid of the 4. And um, let's have a look at what order we do this. Well, first we say, are either of those two things, is that H or that 4, adding or subtracting to the M? So can either of these two things, the H or the 4, be moved? Can I move the H or the 4? Now, actually, I can't use this stage. I can't use this step because neither of the H or the 4 are adding or subtracting. The H is multiplying the M and the 4 is dividing. So both of them fall in this step 2, unsticking. And because they both fall in step 2, it doesn't actually matter what order you do it in. You could kill the 4 first or you could kill the H first. Okay. So I think it's slightly easier to kill the 4 first. So we say to ourselves, right, everything here is being divided by 4. If I want to get rid of a divide by 4, what do I do? Well, the opposite of dividing is timesing. So you write times by 4, times by 4 on both sides. Kill, kill, so cross both those out. And then you literally write what you see. So this becomes S times 4 equals HM. And if you tidy that up, that's 4S equals HM. When we're timesing numbers and letters, we can just stick them together. Remember what we're getting on its own. We are getting the M on its own. There's now only one thing that's stopping that M from being on its own, and that's the H. So it's the H that I have to get rid of. Now, what's the H doing to the M? The H is multiplying the M. So to kill the H, I divide both sides by H. Kill, kill. On this side, I have an M. Now, just like we did before on this side, we write that as 4S. And instead of writing the divide sign, we write it as a fraction divided by H. So final answer here, M equals 4S divided by H. OK, so they're two fairly straightforward answers of rearranging equations. Hopefully with the lessons we've done this week as well, they should be pretty solid in your heads. So have a look at this one. This says, make S the subject of the formula. Now we're beginning to see what exam questions are going to look like in this topic. Make S the subject of a formula. So here's our guy here. Um, let me move this down a bit so I can see it. Here's our guy here, S. And remember what our method is. Our method is going to be to get, try that again, get S on its own. What's your first step? Well, your first step is to move anything. So that's anything being subtracted or um, added. And the second thing is to unstick anything. So that's anything that's being multiplied or divided. And in both those cases, the method is the same. You're doing kill, kill. So let's have a look at what I mean. If I draw my line here, I want you to think to yourselves, what is happening to that S on this side of the equation? So on this side of the equation, that's what I care about because that's where the S is. What are the two things that are being done to this S? So what's that U squared doing and what's that 2S doing? And I want you to think to yourself, so give yourself five seconds, what are you going to get rid of first? Okay, hopefully you've all recognised that what we're going to kill first is the U squared. The reason we're going to kill the U squared is because it's the U squared that's adding to the S. The 2A is multiplying the S. So what do we do first? Well, first we do any moving. So first we get rid of any adding, and then we get rid of the timesing. So if I want to get rid of that U squared, it's currently adding to the 2S. So I subtract both sides by U squared. Make sure you always show that kill kill. So that kills that, and then you just write what you see. Well, on this side of the line now, I now have a V squared minus a U squared. And on this side of the line, I now only have a 2A, S. 
keep your eyes on the prize. What we're trying to get on its own, we're trying to get the S on its own. So if you don't have a highlighter, you can be underlining this as you do it. Now you've dealt with the moving. So now you've dealt with the adding and the subtracting. We have to get rid of the multiplying. So you think to yourself, what is being multiplied by S? And hopefully you're seeing that on both sides, you are now going to have to, oh, let me get rid of that again. You're going to have to divide by 2A and divide by 2A. That kills that. How do we write a divide by 2A? We write it as a fraction. So the best way to write this is V squared minus U squared all divided by 2A equals S. So for the two marks, you'd write S equals V squared minus U squared over 2a. Um, and just to remind you, you could write that as s equals v squared over 2a minus u squared over 2a, if you wanted to do the division on its own. Both of them will be the correct answers. Okay, both of them will give you the two marks. Okay, so next question. I would like you to pause the video and have a go at it on your own. As you can see, you've got an exam question there to practice. It says, make t the subject of the formula. Make T the subject of the formula. So let me give you, um, you want to pause your video, press play when you want to see the answer. Okay, welcome back. So we want to make T this time the subject of the formula. So remember our method is the same method as if we were solving. You want to get, oh my goodness, every time, right, let's try it again. We want to get T on its own. We want to get T on its own. So what's your first step here? Your first step is to get any moving. So any adding or subtracting, you're going to move. Next thing you're going to get rid of any unsticking. So to unstick, remember unstick, we're talking about multiplying and dividing. And what's our method? Our method is kill, kill. So whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So I'll put a line down here. You're looking at that T. And you've got two things going on. You've got number one, you've got t divided by three. And you've also then got this minus 2a here. And what it's really common to do is it's really common to think I've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to get rid of that divide by three. It's really common to want to do something with that guy there, that divide by three. But remember, it doesn't matter how close it looks on the page, the way we rearrange the way we solve is in one particular order always. We move anything, so anything that's being added or subtracted gets moved, and then we unstick. So actually the first thing we do here is we add 2a on both sides. And the reason we add a 2a is an add 2a kills the minus 2a, they're opposites. So the add 2a kills the minus 2a, and what you're left with on this side, you've got y plus 2a, just write what you see, equals, what's the only thing you're left on this side, t minus 3. And we should always be making the side with the letter that you want thinner and thinner and thinner, less and less and less things on it. So there's less things on it there. There was a t over 3 minus 2a, but now there's just a t over 3. Okay, so final final step, we're now looking at the unsticking. So how do I unstick a t divided by 3? Well, the opposite of divide by 3 here is multiply by 3. So both sides here get multiplied by 3. So on this side, the divide by 3 and the times by 3 get killed. So I'm get left with a t here. Now on this side, be very careful. This whole thing has to get multiplied by 3. Everything on that side has to get multiplied by 3. So you can't just write 3y plus 2a. You have to do it three lots of that whole thing. It's three lots of that whole square. Everything on that side has been multiplied by 3. So your final answer is t equals 3 brackets y plus 2a. Okay, and that's two marks. Next question. So we've got, let's make this one so you can see it. Make T the subject of the formula. So another T question. So again, I'd like you to um, pause your video. I want you to have a go at this one. So the two marks came from the exam, um, and you're looking for this guy here. Make T the subject of the formula, this guy here. Okay, so pause your videos now. Okay, so welcome back. So remember, our aim here is going to be to get 
and this time it's t on its own and we've got two methods our first one is to get rid of anything that we need to move so that's anything we can um, add or subtract and then our second step is to unstick so that's we deal with anything that's being multiplied or divided okay and in both steps our method is the same we're doing the kill kill method and this method is exactly the same when we're solving equations so we're not learning two different things here by doing this method you are going to be able to rearrange an equation and solve any equation so if i want to get t on its own where do i start well, i draw a line here i take my time i do it one step at a time i want t on its own what things are stopping t from being on its own? Well, this 3 is, and this 11 is. The 11 is being added, the 3 is being multiplied. So think to yourself, if the 11 is being added and the 3 is being multiplied, what do I get rid of first? Hopefully, from our list, you can see that you're going to get rid of the plus 11 first. So what's the opposite of adding 11? Subtracting 11. So both sides should get a subtracted 11. You draw a cross through where it repeats on both sides, so where you can do your kill kill, and then you write what you see. So this becomes W minus 11 equals 3T. You're very close now to getting T on its own. So I want this guy on its own. And how am I gonna now go about finishing up this question? Well, I need to get rid of that three. What is the three doing to the T? the three is multiplying it. So to get rid of it, I'm gonna divide both sides by three. So on this side, I can do my kill kill. So on this side, I'm definitely left with a T. And on this side, be very, very careful. Remember that divide by three applies to everything on that side. Everything on that side must get divided by three. So it becomes W minus 11, all of that divided by three. So the brackets really help remind us, all of that side divided by three. All of that side divided by three. So final answer, t equals w minus 11, all of it, divided by three. And there's your two marks. Okay. So let's finish up with a few more questions where we've got um, a few more complicated issues with it. So have a look at this one. It says make x the subject of the formula. So this links very nicely to a topic we've actually already done. This links to solving equations, because as I said, it's the same method. You want to get this guy on its own. Same method as we've always had. You're going to start by thinking to yourself, I need to get x on own. Okay. And you've got here, step two, we said was we're going to move anything. So moving is adding and subtracting. And step number three is we're going to unstick. Okay, and that's multiplying and dividing. But actually, there's a little step here that you have to be careful of. Okay, so we haven't used it before, but it is here. And that is get x off the denom. Okay, get x off the denominator. You cannot do any of this method if x is on the denominator. So before we can even use our rearranging method, we have to get x off the denominator. And the, re the, the way we do this, the same as when we're solving equations, we multiply the x up here and we multiply the 3a up here. So what does that actually look like as a line? It becomes p multiplied by 3a equals z multiplied by x. So look at it again. You had a p, but now this 3a has come up to join it. So p times 3a. You had a z on this side and this x has come up to join it. So when I tidy it up, it becomes 3ap equals zx. 3ap equals zx. So I've just got rid of the multiplication there. And then you think to yourself, right, now I can do this method. So now I'm here, I can go through my normal method. Is there anything that needs to be moved? Well, what do you want to get on its own? You want to get the x on its own. The only thing that's stopping the x on its own is the times by z. So actually, this is a nice, easy final part. You're going to divide both sides by z. Divide both sides by z. This kills this. So you just have an x here on its own. And you've got all of this, 3ap, all of that is being divided by z. So final answer, x equals 3ap, you can write a bracket if you want, divided by z. Okay, let's look at another example. 
very same method here. It says make x the subject of the formula. So you've got your normal method. You want to step number one, get x on its own. And then your normal step two is to deal with any movement. So that's any addition or subtraction. And step three is to unstick, which is multiplication and division. And your method for both of those is kill, kill. However, you have to remember there's a little step here you have to do, which is you get x off the, denom the denominator. Okay? This x is currently down here, and that's a big problem for you. Look, there's the x. You need to get it off the denominator. So to do that, we say, right, this guy, this whole thing, you get the pen, this whole thing is going to get multiplied up here. And actually, this number here is 3 over 1, if you wanted to write it as a fraction. So technically, this 1 gets multiplied up here. So you get your cross multiplication like we've just been doing. So when I write it, it becomes 3a times 1 equals 3 brackets 4 minus 2x, like that. If I tidy it up, that becomes 3a equals, and then this guy here, when I expand it, well, the expanding looks like this, a 4 and a minus 2x. Remember, I'm multiplying in my grid. So the first thing I do is I do 3 times 4. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. And then I do 3 times minus 2, minus 6x. So here it becomes 3a equals 12 minus 6x. And remember what it is you want to get on its own. You want to get the x on its own. You want to get that guy. So now we're back to our normal problem. Now we're back to working through our method. Thinking about what do I need to move? What do I need to unstick? So hopefully here you've got two things. You've got a plus 12, so you've got a positive 12 here. So this 12 number is a positive number. You've got a plus 12. And you've also got to deal with this minus 6. And this minus 6 is multiplying the x. So think about which one you're going to get rid of first. We're going to get rid of the moving one. So you've got a 12. So you've got a 12. It's a positive 12. You've got a 12. And you are going to minus 12 from both sides to kill it. So you do the opposite sign. So if you've got a positive 12, we're using a negative 12. So positive 12 and negative 12 kill each other. And on this side, you're left with 3a minus 12 equals minus 6x. Final step, you want to get x on its own. What's stopping x from being on its own? That minus 6. What's the minus 6 doing to, both, uh, to the x? And hopefully you can see it's multiplying it. So you're going to divide both sides by the minus 6. This kills that. And what you left with on this side, an x. And on this side and the other side here, you've got this whole thing, 3a minus 12, all of it, divided by the minus 6. So final answer, x equals 3a minus 12 over minus 6. You can put a bracket around those if it really helps you think everything on that side divided by minus 6. Everything on that side divided by the minus 6. And there's your answer. Last question then to look at. You want to make x the subject of the formula. So I would like you to, if I take you through the method first, number one, what are you trying to do? Well, you're trying to get x on its own. What's your method? Well, firstly, you're dealing with any movements. You're dealing with any adding or subtracting. Then you're dealing with any unsticking. So you're dealing with any multiplication or any division. OK, but before you can do that, you have to make sure that X is not on the denominator. Not on the denominator. So when I look at this problem, I know there's an issue because hopefully you can all see that that X is down there. It's on the denominator. That's not good. So you set up your problem. You say, OK, K, K squared. over x plus 4 equals 3j, and I'll help you out, over 1. And this whole thing is going to have to go up there, and this whole thing is going to go up there. So pause your video now and see if you can just write me the next line, the next line of this working out. What happens when you move those two things up? So pause now and have a go at that, and press play when you want to check. 
Okay, welcome back. So when we move it up, we have a k squared times a one. We have a three j multiplied by an x plus four. So it looks something like this. So this becomes on this side, k squared equals on this side, you've got a three j on the outside, and you've got an x and a four. And we're multiplying our grids together. So this should become three j x. And this should become 12j because 3 times 4 gives me the 12 and the j. So what does this tidy up quite nicely to? k squared equals 3jx plus 12j. Okay, and now we're back to your normal method. So don't forget what you need to do. You want to get x on its own. You want to get x on its own. So pause now and see if you can finish off this problem. Press play when you want to check the answers. Okay, fantastic. So welcome back. So let's finish off this problem. You want to get x on its own. There are two things happening to this x and this problem. There is a times by 3j and there is a add 12j. So you look at your list and you think, what do I get rid of first? Well, first, I must get rid of any movement. I must get rid of anything that's being added or subtracted. So hopefully you can see it's that 12j. So I'm going to get rid of a plus 12j by minusing 12j on both sides. So it happens on both sides, that kills that. On this side, I have a k squared minus 12j equals 3jx. Next question, you've got rid of anything that's moving, now it comes to unsticking. So I need to unstick this 3j. Currently, that 3j is multiplying the x, therefore to kill it, I'm going to divide both sides by 3j. So I'm going to divide by 3j here and divide by 3j here. That kills that. So on this side, you're left with an x. And on this side, you've got everything that was there before. Everything that was there before, all of it divided by the 3j. So you finish this question off by getting the final answer. x equals k squared minus 12j all over 3j and there's your answer okay so well done for watching this lesson i would like you to go back now you can watch this video again you can have a look at some of the more specific live lessons for this week but you've got four hecate clips to do this week you've got 280 281 282 and 283 please get in contact if you need any help with that well done keep going and i will see you soon